So I'm constantly changing things in my personal rig, maybe just starting from the ground up, uh, switching CPUs. I tried out Xeons before, i5s, i7s. Uh, and so this build here is, is kind of the apex of where I expect to be for this year. Uh, and I say that because I really don't see the feasibility in going any higher than this given what I do on my personal rig. Of course, adding a second graphics card would be, I guess you could do it, but given the monitors that I have, I really don't need a second one. Uh, and the 6700K does everything I want it to do. I don't, I don't think that purchasing a 6800K or uh, maybe a 6950X, some of those crazy expensive ones from Broadwell, uh, are, are justifiable given what I do. I do uh, edit in 4K at 30 FPS and 60 uh, FPS in 1080p, but the 6700K is plenty for that, and as long as you have an adequate amount of RAM on board, in this case, I have 16 here, I'm probably gonna upgrade that to 32 at some point, uh, but 16 is kind of the bare minimum for, for that kind of content creation. But for the most part, everything else is subjective, so what you decide to cool your CPU with, what you decide to power your computer with, uh, the graphics card to an extent, depending on what you do with your computer. If you play a lot of games and, I don't know, on your 4K monitor, then you're going to want uh, more GPU horsepower than probably this right here. And then a Z170 motherboard, preferably. If you buy something like this, it wouldn't make any sense to not purchase a Z170 motherboard. So uh, that's what we've got here. Now, something else I've decided to do this time around is get as many things as possible to match. So there's always something in the rig that doesn't look right. Maybe the RAM or, uh, I don't know, the motherboard. I have to paint myself. Uh, so in this case, you all know that I like the color white because white takes on the color of any, any LEDs uh, that you shine at it. I've decided to go as white as possible for this rig. I was going to call this video uh, the whitest PC build on YouTube, but that can be portrayed as kind of a a racial slur, so I'm just gonna call it, I don't know what I'm gonna call it. Go ahead and leave some comments, some suggestions, I guess I could call part two the, uh, the finished product, whatever you guys decide to name it. Uh, but this is a white motherboard for the most part, so the PCB is actually white, as I'll show you here in a second. This is not white, but I'm gonna paint it white. I've painted plenty of graphics cards. I'm gonna use white engine enamel, uh, the glossy white, to, uh, to make this thing match everything else. The radiator, the actual radiator itself in this Captain 240EX from Deepcool they just released. Uh, you can find this part as well as everything else that you see here in the video description. The radiator itself is white, which is super cool, super unique. I don't know many radiators that are white. Uh, and then also the the water block itself, whatever you want to call it, the pump water block combo, that is white as well. And uh, there's a white LED inside of that. So yeah, everything for the most part is white or will be white. Like I said, I'm gonna paint that. And then, so that was really loud. White cables from Cable Mod hooked us up again. So we have two uh, six pins for video. We have two eight pins for video and then one EPS eight pin uh, for the CPU and a six, uh, well 16, 24 pin for uh, motherboard power. I also threw in a cable mod Asus Aura uh, RGB LED strip. I don't know if this supports Aura on board, in which case I won't use the, uh, yeah, I won't use the built-in one. I'll just plug it into the motherboard, but uh, we'll find out. I mean, I don't mind using this. I've used it before. Uh, perfect for what we plan to do with this build. I don't think I'm gonna turn it any other color other than white at first. Maybe I'll get fancy with it later on. But uh, so, first thing I'm gonna do is paint that thing. I'm gonna paint that that thing. Yep, gonna paint the graphics card and then I'll go ahead and show you the, this motherboard is, is beautiful. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and show you right now. There are a few, like, I guess they call them sand brown colors on the board, but for the most part, this thing is white and that's perfect. So needless to say, this board will look absolutely beautiful. I mean, really in any case, but especially the one that I plan on putting in, which I haven't mentioned yet. It's the NZXT S340 white case. I'm waiting on it. It's not here yet. It should be here sometime this afternoon. I have to walk down to the post office and pick it up. Everything about this board is just thoroughly thought through. I, I really like it. I can't wait to put this thing together and see what it all looks like. Uh, the board isn't really that expensive either, so you're probably thinking, well, oh, it's a $200, $250 motherboard. I picked this one up on Newegg for a 170 something dollars, US dollars. Uh, so that's really not that bad. Anything in the $100 price range uh, for a Z170 board, I would recommend anything over that. <laughs> You're kind of just paying for the aesthetics. So in this case, yeah, I did pay a bit of a premium for the white PCV, but in my opinion, it was totally worth it. Oh my. I'm sure a few of you are going to be very disappointed with my decision to paint this thing, but in the end, I think you're gonna 
you're gonna see what I mean. I, I really think this is gonna look beautiful in white. It already looks beautiful in black, but it's not gonna match really anything in the rig except for like some of these accents and stuff, so. Why did it is. So whenever you're doing something this tedious, always be very, very careful of your surroundings. So in this case, there are a few screws holding the fans into place that I do have to take off. Uh, and not just screws holding the fan on, but also holding this top shroud on. So you see that screw right in there. Very carefully take a screwdriver and, and pull that one out. Uh, that takes off this front shroud here. See, it's almost off already. And then uh, we'll have to take off the cooler in order to get to the back plate, which I also want to paint. So I'll have to basically disassemble everything on here before, uh, before I can start painting anything. That one was for the LEDs in the top shroud here. That wire right there is what plugged into this corner lead here. But uh, something else that I came across is the fact that this is kind of multi-layered. So if you, if you look closely here, you can see that kind of off blackish, tan, brown, gray, I don't know what it is. Anyway, these pieces here would be really cool looking if I could just paint those. I don't know if I can take them off though. It looks like they're kind of melted into the, the actual top frame. So maybe I can push those out with the screw. I've done it on the uh, MSI 980Ti, but I don't know if I can do it here. I don't want to break the uh, front shroud. So we'll see. I'll let you know what I decide to do. I'm going to be completely honest here. That looks like some terrible thermal paste. Hey, Seuss, what is going on? We're going to put our own thermal paste on here. Give me one sec to clean it off with some isopropyl. Well, after about 20 minutes of prying with this flathead screwdriver bit right here, uh, I finally got all six of these pieces off, and this is all I'm going to paint for the top of the GP truck. Keep in mind, this will be facing downwards, so you really won't even won't even be seeing it for the most part. But these accents should go nicely with the back plate, which is up here. So I finally took the back plate off as well. Uh, I pulled off the, there's like a little LED panel thing behind this logo and that also lights up. You can turn that different colors. I set that right here. So you can see there's two LEDs. It's really not, there we go. Now two LEDs right there and they kind of just, I guess spread out across the panel and shine through the logo uh, and cut out on the back plate. But anyway, we're gonna paint this whole thing and we're gonna paint these six parts here and I think that's all we're gonna be painting for now. Uh, yeah, I got, I got a little hungry. So let's go ahead and take these outside. I'll give them a couple coats of engine enamel white gloss. So I was super excited about finishing this card up. It's not the best paint job in the world, certainly not my personal best, uh, but everything looks really good, I think. That's how it's gonna look from the side, from the top, but I forgot one thing, and it's, oh, this is gonna suck. Okay, see, <laughs> underneath that, I'm supposed to have the LED panel. Completely forgot to include it. I'm gonna have to take everything off again to get this back plate off with a PCB to put this back where it goes. Let's go ahead and boom, case is here, folks. We're gonna open that up and uh, start assembling everything from the ground up. See, this is what I have to go through when I don't have a full-time cameraman. I could just use a tripod like I've done in the past, but for some reason, this just feels more personal to me. I know it's not as clean cut in the end, but well, you get, you get my voice close up, close up into the mic, and at the same time, you're getting a first person perspective of a, uh, what I think would be a pretty cool PC build in the end. Wow, this is really difficult to do with one hand. Oh, S340, how I have missed you. A few of you probably are wondering why I went with this one instead of my, uh, my favorite P400. That's because I already bought the P400 twice and built in it twice, and I feel like going uh, old school again to a good old S340. I just like the minimalistic look of this. I did as well of the P400 and the underglow the P400 has that this doesn't have, but I think the white accent in there is gonna look really good next to the motherboard. And I think the graphics card is gonna look really sweet next to that. Here it is as well. I always get excited when it comes to picking the processor for a build. I mean, that this is really gonna determine what your system can do well and what it can't do well, especially uh, when it comes to content creation, which is what I do a lot of nowadays. And uh, I, I honestly was expecting to purchase an i7-6800K for this build, but after pricing everything out, I mean, yeah, you're getting two extra cores and four extra threads, but 
you're gonna pay more for an X99 motherboard, and most of them don't come in. I don't think any X99 motherboard is is a uh, comes in white, does it? I don't know. Maybe there's like one or two, but they're certainly gonna be over 200 bucks. And on top of that, the i7-6700K is one of the best processors for gaming. Period. Um, in most cases, I would recommend an i5-6600K, and you really won't notice, notice much of a difference between that and this, but. For content creation, you want the best of both worlds, and that's what I think the 6700K offers. And I got this plus the board on Newegg with a $20 bonus for uh, for pairing the two for the bundle. So I only ended up paying about 300 effective US dollars for this, and then about 170 bucks for that. So 300 bucks for a 6700K is a no-brainer in my book. If you can make room for an i7, I recommend it. And if it's only going to be about 60 to 80 bucks more than an unlocked i5. To me, again, no-brainer. So that's why I want the 6700K. These are cheaper platforms, just all together. Yeah, the nice big sockets on those X99 boards look so good, but for so much more money, we're talking about two to 300 bucks more just to enter X99 territory when you combine the CPU and motherboard price. So, yep, Z170 it is for now. It takes a true pro to be able to do this with one hand. Where's the golden arrow? So that's right there on the bottom. Gonna be going that way. Gently. There we go. And then tuck her in. This right here, folks, is what we call tech porn. Just straight up, nothing dirty. It's just art. It's art. So these aren't white themselves, like the actual frame of these dims aren't white, but the LED, you've seen these before on my other rigs, the LEDs inside of these are white, so that'll kind of work, right? And then on top of that, I'm gonna make sure the cards LEDs are, are synced to white as well. So uh, we should have a nice white theme uh, all around, including, oh, really? Uh, I hate it when they do this. When, they, when these right here aren't retractable, so you're just shoving your dim in on one side and then having to kind of work it on this side. That's an inconvenience. But anyway, um, if I had the time, I would take off these, these covers and paint them as well but I, I'm not prepared to use a heat gun to get these things off. They are difficult to get off without a heat gun. I know I've done it before. So uh, why aren't you focusing? There we go. So I'm just gonna throw them in as is. If it gets annoying and whatnot, I might change it. But I, I think for the most part, it's gonna, it'll blend in. I mean, there's black on the board too. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep them the way they are. Uh, one other thing about this board I wanna point out, if you were telling me on Twitter how much you like this board, uh, there are so many fan headers on this thing. Like, you know, you know how in most cases you have to buy a fan hub if you wanna put more than like four fans in there, or at least like a splitter. I don't recommend doing that, by the way. Uh, well, in this case, you are not going to have a problem. So look at this, okay. When you have a board that says assistant fan, like, call, uh, really, assistant fan? You're not just gonna call that a chassis fan or like a CPU two fan or something? Come on, uh, what is that? Four fan headers. One of them's for a pump, but whatever, it's a fan header. And then another one here, the assistant. And then we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five so we have five down here six ten ten fan headers on this motherboard oh whoops and eleven there's one right here too eleven fan headers when are you ever going to use that many fans i can't imagine ever needing that many for a z170 platform but hey saber tooth hooks you up you can keep yourself nice and cool inside the case get it because it's a snow theme <laughs> that was really that was really cheesy so this right here, folks, is the Deep Cool 240EX. They're brand new, 240 millimeter all-in-one uh, radiator water cooler combo. You can see we had a white block on top. It looks like the fluid is a uh, is tinted some kind of dark. I don't know if it's actually the fluid itself or it's just the tint of the of the tubing. But the whole cooler is just perfect, absolutely perfect for this build. But look at the radiator. The radiator itself is white. Even the fins are white. That is so cool. And uh, the fans included are in a white frame. They have a unique little blade design in there. Not gonna be the quietest, but we can tune that in the computer itself from GamerStorm. Of course, this is our GamerStorm series. So from the side, I put the fans in, you'll see nothing but white. And also from the inside of the case, nothing but white along with the white water block and pump integrated in there as well. That is super cool. Um, I, I really can't wait to put this in. This is this whole build, I don't know if you guys are seeing it yet, but this whole build is, is gonna look so cool in all white. I think this is gonna be one of the whitest PC builds ever on YouTube, and that's thanks to a lot of different parts kind of working together 
and a bit of customization on, uh, on my part. And there it is installed. So I have the fans pulling air in from this side. Sorry, the couch is really, yeah, it's really noisy. Have the air pulling in from this side. Uh, it's gonna push through the radiator fins into the case. Now that there will be a bit of hot air in here, uh, but that's better than exhausting air out this side or having the fans on this side and uh, I guess pulling air in. I prefer push and that's what they're doing. They're pushing uh, air through the radiator. Yeah, either way, you're gonna be choking the graphics card. So I'd rather have air here uh, for the graphics card to, to pull uh, even if it's gonna be pretty hot. So this has got to be one of the best AIO cooler designs ever. I mean, that's so painless and it, you know it's secure once you have all, all those screws tucked in. And to secure the block itself, only two, so it's super easy to pull off. And I really like that design. So here's what it looks like so far, folks. As you can see, white. That is the point. I think it's looking really good. So one other thing that I tried to match with the rest of the build was uh, the solid state drive that I used. It's a 240 gig. And you can, you can mount two right here. So one's definitely going right there. If I get a second one later on, I'll put it beside it. Uh, but check this out. So I got the uh, Toshiba Tryon tree. I don't know how you say it, but boom. Now, now you tell me that, huh? Huh? That's pretty good, right? That's pretty close. Actually, the, the gray is, is almost perfect. It's almost the exact same color. So I think this is gonna go well with the rest of the build. Okay, up next is the power supply. One thing before I uh, go ahead and install that. I have a, a Wi-Fi card. I know it's hard to tell, but I painted the top of that PCB black. I used Plasti Dip, so it, it's not gonna be conductive. I don't recommend doing this uh, normally, but it's a Wi-Fi card. Something happens to it, it's like 20 bucks, so I'm not too worried about it. But it, it was a green board, and that didn't match anything in here. So yeah, now it's black, it's nice and subtle-ish, and uh, it looks a lot better than it did when it was green. As for the power supply, this is the 600 watt uh, modular power supply from Deepcool that I told you originally was going to McLovin. I decided to keep it for this build here. Now Deepcool is sending a 1000 watt power supply, and I'm gonna put it in this rig, but that's because I have a special plan for this thing. I'm gonna need the extra power. Uh, maybe not a thousand watts of it, but uh, future proof and uh, power proof for sure. So this one is modular as you can see um, Now the cable mod cables are not designed specifically for this so I had to buy extensions uh, They don't offer cables for this particular modular power supply from Deepcool uh, So we're gonna be using these included uh, modular cables we're just gonna have to use the excess cable in here and then tie the uh, extensions from the cable mod kit on the ends of these and plug those into the leads on the computer. Another cool thing I didn't mention about the uh, this power supply here is that all of these modular cables that are included with the PSU are black. So they're all black sleeve. You don't have to worry about that yellow and red ketchup and mustard look. Also decided to paint these. So these are the SSD trays that go right here on top of the basement. Uh, one of these will be occupied for now. The other one might be later on. But uh, yeah, so something else to I'm gonna go along with the white theme here. And okay, I think I've plugged everything in. If I'm missing something, I'll know right away, but this is it. This is the final product. As you can see, yeah, mostly uh, mostly white. I did a, I farmed something right here. I, I, I don't know what I did to do this, but I ended up scraping some paint off of the back plate, so I had to improvise and kind of paint over that with what I had. So it's not the cleanest looking. It wasn't originally, but it's certainly not now. Um, but from a good two feet away, it looks nice and clean. So it's, it's like a two foot mod, I guess. But everything in there is just so color coordinated. It's, I, I yeah, I, I really like the way that it, that it looks. I think I'm gonna like it even more when we turn it on. Um, I did put one of these TF120s in there from Deepcool from the Gamerstorm series, as well as a Fantex fan up top, a 140 to kind of fill in the whole gap up here because that was just, my OCD was kicking in. And then of course the white radiator and a water loop from Deepcool. I think that is the, th that's the pinnacle of this build. Uh, I, I really like the, the black cables here in contrast with the white pump and the all white radiator. That is so cool looking. So uh, hopefully it boots up. Hopefully we don't have any problems. Let's see what it looks like with the lights on. And one last thing right here. Uh, it's always tough getting this thing perfect. Ugh. Well, yeah. Oh, that looks 
I like straight. These are a big deal to me. I like to have these on my build. This is just, just let you know what you're packing inside. Speaking of which, here she is, folks. Oh yeah. So uh, this was originally red, and uh, you can change this with their Aura software. Just go ahead and download it online, and uh, you can customize this. Something that's a little strange to me, the top of it, let me turn down the exposure. Uh, the top of it is one color, so you set you set the color in the app, but then the top of it is the color that you set it to, but then the sides here are actually a deviation of that color. So for instance, on top here it's like an aqua, marine-ish, blue-green color, and on the bottom it's strictly blue, like there's no green at all in it. So uh, it just kind of deviates from the original color scheme that you select in the app, uh, at least here on the sides and on the bottom. Even though you really can't see the bottom in this case, um, that would be something to note if you're planning on purchasing this particular 1070 featuring Asus Aura. Other than that, I am very happy with the build. Uh, there we go. So it looks super orange everywhere else in the room, but in the case, you're seeing a truer color. Um, and this, by the way, can be changed with the included remote that, uh, that will come with any cable mod RGB kit. Not RGB strip, but RGB kit. So that's white, you can do red, uh, let's see, green, there's a blue here, that's super blue in the camera, wow. Um, that is a yellow, believe it or not, but that looks pretty white here in the camera, it's a white balance issue. And then that's a lighter blue, that's like a blue green almost, and then a purple color. All in all, very, very happy with the build. I will post benchmarks very soon. I know you guys are really wondering what this thing can do. So I'm gonna put it through, put it through all of my games that I have on Steam. Maybe buy a few extras and start testing with those as well too because I'm kind of falling behind in terms of uh, modern games. So I'll do that. Um, there you go, one last shot. That's, that's her. I don't know what I want to call it. I, I want you guys to tell me what you think this should be called. So uh, leave a comment with a name suggestion. My brother said something like Arctic Tundra or Frozen Tundra. I don't know, something snowish or, or snowish. Well, come on, Greg. Uh, something that has to do with, I don't know, the Arctic, the snow, uh, ice, something like that. Uh, those would be my suggestions to stick within those realms. Although you could come up with something else. Who knows? I may like it. So uh, that's it. Thanks for sticking around and watching the build log. Um, I know this was interesting in the first person perspective. It's not too often that we do something like that on the channel. Uh, but I'm, I'm still trying to work on some things. I, I usually do the tripod mount and you guys just watch me put it together via tripod. But I wanted to see if you guys prefer this style or if you prefer that style. To be completely honest with you, doing it this way is a lot easier because I can just crop and crop and crop and it's, it's fine, no big deal. Uh, but when I have it on a tripod, I have to consistently move things around. I have to... Uh, I have to find the exact place where I want to crop it. I have to blend it in. I have to do voiceovers. That's a that's a whole other thing I have to do. I have to use the microphone and uh, and do voiceovers. So that takes up a lot of time too. If I do it in a vlog style, which I've noticed a lot of tech tubers have been doing that recently, it just makes things go by a lot smoother for me in the editing process. Maybe that's why they're doing it. It's just easier on them too. So I see that now. Uh, but let me know what you think about this build, the build log, the, the series itself. And uh, let's put it through some benchmarks in the next video, shall we? Thanks for watching. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.